Stop! Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And this is another Patreon review <clears throat> coming at you by Sean O'Brien. We have a tier on Patreon. It's called Immortality is Yours. Take it! And uh, if you want us to review a movie or do a commentary for a movie, then you can go on our <coughs> Patreon, you can select that tier, and we'll do it for you. And Sean O'Brien is the latest to do it, and he's picked because he's a huge Danielle Harris fan, and why wouldn't Who he? Who is it? Oh, <coughs> I fucked up my light. Mm. Yeah. He's picked Blood Knight, The Legend of Mary Hatchet. Blood Knight, The Legend of Mary Hatchet. So, did you guys wake the day? Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. I like, I thought it was said The Legend of Molly Hatchet. I was like, oh, it's one of those. Okay, I love behind the music without the music. There's a dragon and a guy with a fucking flaming axe riding on the back of said dragon. Let's go! <laughs> Molly Hatchet, let's get our fuck on. Yeah. Ten years ago, a small Long Island town was rocked by a series of gruesome murders. The killer became a legend. It was basically the Sarah Connor T2 story because she was in a mental asylum and... Well, uh, she was in a mental asylum for good goddamn reason. Well, that's true. For good goddamn that's reason. True. You don't not go to Sunday school when you're told to go, <laughs> you heathen bitch. She gets raped and all sorts of terrible shit happens to her oh, before please. she decided... Before that, she that come takes bad. <laughs> <laughs> before she decides that X go give it to you, and then uh -oh. she fucking just. In, the opening of this movie is so weird. She, the opening is probably the best part. Of, it is the best part of the movie. Yeah. She's she's basically the character from Thirteen Ghosts, where she's butt naked. You know the character, uh, the naked chick from Thirteen Ghosts with the cuts yeah, all over her body. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I think it's. <clears throat> I think that was the angry princess. I think that was their name in the Thirteen. It would make sense if she yeah. was. Chick. And, and you know, I like the lawyer guy because I felt the same way in the Thirteen Ghosts because when you see her in the asylum years later, he's like nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt that way too. But uh, no, she's she's butt ass naked, and all this bad shit's happened to her. And then all of a sudden, she goes Michael Myers in Halloween Six, strobe light killing the doctors on everybody, and just fucking ruins. People. Yeah, there were things about this movie I just did not enjoy. Not because it was like some of the stuff I didn't enjoy because I just didn't think it really flowed well. But other things I didn't like because it scared my nipple off. I don't like the herky jerky shit. And sometimes they would show these supernatural events, showing Mary Hatchet. Walking weird, like, oh, think, gong, think, gong, and I say, go fucking suck a kite stick. <laughs> I don't like that stuff. It just always gets me going in the wrong way. If kites had dicks, that would be. They a, have a string. A party I don't want to go to. It's a, it's a string. Field beam. day. Yeah. Field, pride field day. Just a bunch of dicks flying around, you know? Yeah, people love it. Yeah. People uh, love it in San Fran. Hands <laughs> <laughs> up! Come on, lady! Come on! was born. So, and that, that was weird that you mentioned that, dude, because this movie, it was one of those movies that the opener, uh, it reminded me almost of the Friday the 13th remake, because the beginning was just so balls to the wall and badass, and the beginning of this was too. At first, when you first see the little girl, and her mom's like brushing her hair, and then the girl goes crazy. And you know why she got mad? Because she's like, this, you fucking had a knot in my hair and you didn't even care. She just kept going. Don't tell mother no! <laughs> she stabs her in the with these scissors, uh, another Halloween 4 reference in a weird way. Yeah. But uh, she stabs her with these scissors and like the way the mom turns and she looks at her, she's like, no! Nah! First off, it's I, the I, worst. I don't understand like how it happens a lot in horror movies. You got stabbed in the fucking eyeball, but yet somehow you're still able to go, I can't believe it's happened! <laughs> like your eyeball is hanging out of its socket with a freaking pair of scissors. You should be dead or in shock, but yeah. nope, you're just like <clears throat> These were my cutting scissors. Instead, she grabs the camera like like it was uh, Mad Max and just turns around screaming, going, "Ah!" And like the worst acting ever. And you think, okay, this is this is totally what we're in for. But yeah. then they do some dude. Whoever edited this movie gets like, you should get an Oscar. And I'm serious because you can tell it's this terrible, terrible, like god awful uh, C movie shit. But the way this dude does the editing with these quick cuts and like the shaky cam and the herky jerky shit that you hate so much, okay. it actually makes it pretty fucking cool. And it feels like uh, almost in House from Haunted Hill, the remake, you know how you see the doctor's faces and they'd be like, rum, rum, rum. you know what I mean? Oh, Freaky as fuck. I don't like it. And at least in the opening, whatever they did with the camera work and the editing, they made this C or D movie shit look pretty scary and like badass for like a gnarly beat. Within the first like, well yeah, I mean some of the supernatural effects that they do use do come off pretty well and they come off clean, but the other parts of like the very, like Mike said, the very beginning of the movie is where it's at. Like that's really where you're gonna get what you need from it. 
<laughs> we know what you need. What you want? That sweet, sweet rock. Uh, but <laughs> that's just gonna be a running theme. Get over it. Uh, but at the very beginning, the, the, the first, I guess, like it's twenty something minutes. Uh, that's where the shock value and and the cool like ideas about what they're trying to do come at you, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go with and see what happens. The gore effects are really what save it because they do a really solid job with gore effects in this. Even with the, I don't know how much the budget was, but they do a pretty good million amount. Million dollars. Okay, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> uh, but I thought it was less than that. But I know I was. If I had three million, if I had three million, well, by God, I would have at least used five hundred thousand on the movie. We got any blood night plans tonight? We'll be partying. It was very Rob Zombie. It was very, very much Rob Zombie. I mean, it didn't have the spitting and the weird beard hair and like, you know, the sweaty arm stains, but it was close. That girl had breast implants because those were the perkiest boobies I've ever seen. If Because she was in a psychiatric unit. Okay, but you should have nice boobs in a second. No, 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 it wasn't like that though. These boobs were like, you could see the jiggle, like you could see the jiggle <laughs> of silicon in those boobies. Because she's in a psychiatric unit when she gets older that they committed her to, because obviously, you know, they found, you know, the cops came, they arrested the little girl. She grows up in a psychiatric unit. Uh, and then this fat, like, security guard walks by and is like, you want to suck a goo goo gaga on the lollipop? <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, man. I, I was oh like, what the hell, goo goo gaga? Did you have a lollipop that's not in your wiener? I think it's Rachel, but it's like, take this goo goo gaga! Yeah, so, <laughs> so this, this security guard, this fat, nasty security guard, he looked like uh, Carl Winslow's partner in Family Man. <laughs> he comes in there and rapes the shit out of her, and it's, it's a pretty rough scene to watch. I mean, to be honest, like, it's pretty rough. It's like, I, like I said, it's very Rob Zombie ish. She gets pregnant, uh, they tell her that she miscarried, or she didn't miscarry, but it was a stillbirth. I like the doctor about it. Anyway. I'm sorry, guys. No, no, yeah, I know what you think. The thinking, doctors yeah. walk up to the door, they're just like, they see that she's pregnant, and they're like, how did this happen? <laughs> they just like walk away. Where is my beautiful house? <laughs> Where is my beautiful life? Uh, yeah, it was. It was very, like, those, some of the acting is very, oh, very well, bad. Let's get a foot long. What, what are you having today? <laughs> uh, onions on yours or no? Like, I had gas the other day, no. Uh, but yeah, so they were, it was, sometimes the acting is very, like, whatever, but there's also, it's, speaking of bedside manner, wow, where the fuck did you get yours, Dr. Gavorkian? Because after that poor girl loses her, like, they tell her that she had a stillbirth, the doctor's, like, walking, go, like, very mean, like, She doesn't even know. Like, a, no, she, he was like a principal that's telling you that you're not gonna get your hall pass back ever. He was like, the baby didn't make it, get her out of here. And then they walk away, and then she opens her eyes, and then she goes on a killing mayhem spring throughout the, uh, psychiatric unit. And, uh, then we... From there, we go into where we are into 2007. Yeah. The but whole, uh, but the, the, the montage that takes place, the killings that take place in this, like I said, 20, it's 20 to 30 minute uh, uh, beginning of the movie, it's done pretty well. Like, yeah. I mean, I would say that if you're watching just the first 30 minutes of it, you're like, <clears throat> this probably is an underrated gem, and you must be Prince Ali, fabulous he, to open <laughs> up the, the gate of wonders to even understand what this is. But Because you would have thought it maybe got buried in all the other movies, and it was just like that, but no. Well, you, get, I mean, you get pretty bad later on. I think what happened was they took 2.5, they, they took probably like a, a million five, you know, and, and filmed that opening. 30 minutes? And, and then, yeah. And God then, damn, was there coupons? They went and then they did like a million dollars worth of blow and came back and were like, we can still make a pretty good movie with okay, this. Okay, they right? did a million dollars worth of blow. I'm on their side. Because <laughs> the next thing you see, then it goes into teen slasher territory because the entire uh, middle part of the movie, which is not that bad, it's almost again it reminds me of the Jason reboot because these kids aren't completely hateable. Like I liked some of the kids, even though they were. I mean, it's it's the most carbon copy like. Yeah, it's high school, <clears throat> college yeah, kids. You can get. They're all getting wasted and and having sex and, and dancing boobies on each other. Getting wasted, getting drunk with my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very Friday the Thirteenth. Like they even at one point pull a tiger of the killer tomatoes. Oh god, I want to kill them all. Then they scream <laughs> it, and then they just start taking off their clothes for no good reason whatsoever. Yeah, those girls were hot. I, I, I want that party now. That one girl with oh, the butt cheek. She was like, geez. "You grab this butt cheek." You grab that butt cheek. He'll get his butt cheek. Don't you worry about how. And it just looks like a fun time. Let's bump chests. Uh, but yeah, the thing about that whole scene, the opening sequence when they move from the psychiatric unit, and by the way, the reason why Mary Hatchet dies is because she throws the head of her uh, her rapist at these cops and she's butt naked walking at, you know, outside the psychiatric unit after she's murdered everybody. And they still shoot yeah, her. Yeah, they still shoot her. Naked woman. Uh, I don't know. Um, I was like, yeah, you, you didn't really have much cause to shoot her there. No. She, like, she threw a severed head at you. Yes, that's fucking scary, but you're like, kill her! You jump to the high school scenes, and they're coming out of school. By the way, at least a little preface before that, Blood Night, which is what they call it, has been now reveled. And, like, the kids of this town love it. It's like a folklore kind of thing. They all get behind it. Fire it up! 
Fire it up! Yeah, I'm a little fucking worm on a big fucking hook. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's kind of like that. They they just enjoy the fact that it's a folklore to them. It's not real or it's a myth, and they have fun with it's. It's a mischievous night. It takes place. I guess it's a near Halloween. It's like Halloween. Yeah, it's pretty much like Halloween. And then they celebrate and go out and get drunk and, and titty fuck and everything else. Oh, good stuff. I love it. Um, good titty fucks. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much where we, we take place at later on, and then they go, these asshole kids go to the cemetery with these Ouija boards. By the way, I didn't like any of these kids. I didn't like one of these fucking kids. I like the blonde kid who was trying to get the margarita maker to work. I didn't like A, them. because I've been there. Those are hard to make work. And you can no, all... I see dick. It's, it's like a 40-year-old version with uh, uh, Steve Carell, and they're like, what are you going to do this weekend? And he's like, well, I wanted an egg sandwich, so I bought the eggs and all the... <laughs> A kucha mall, and then by the time I made it, I didn't even want it. Cause you, you get the ice and you get the mix, and you don't know what the fuck you're doing because you're 16 years old, and then you get the shitty blender that you found in your mom's, you know, cabinetry, and no one can make the fucking margarita, so you just end up chugging vodka out of your butthole like you do at every other high school party. I mean, that's the only way to go with it. Just mm -hmm. get that dirty brown stain. Yeah. But uh, look, the thing is, they go to the they go to the cemetery of Mary Hatchet and they play with a Ouija board, which is a great idea. <laughs> it's pointless. So I even have that. Scene. I know, but so good idea. They put candles up. And then it gets really Scooby-Doo mysteries because all of a sudden Graveyard Gus comes out of the fucking left field. Bill Mosley. Yeah, and I like Bill Mosley. I actually like Graveyard Gus, but he, he was terrible in this movie. No, but he reminded me of the same fucking guy that was in Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, the tropes were the same. Yeah. And he, 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 but it, like these kids sh should have been making. I mean, they were bully kids. I mean, they were obviously built to be bullies. They were bullies, yeah. I think, at the very beginning, even though they invite those freshmen later on or sophomores. But they were like, Graveyard Gus, hey, what are you doing here late at night? He's like, oh, you kids shouldn't be out this late. Do you know what day it is? Like, yeah, it's blood night. Hey, Graveyard Gus, can you tell us a story? No one can weave a tale like you, sir. <laughs> and he was like, no, well, I'm going to you straight about this. Yeah, he's like, well, I guess I can here. Let me take a drink of my drinks here and tells you. Now, the story he tells, actually, it was pretty cool. I was like, I like that story. When he was, like, he talked about a married couple and Molly, or Molly, I'm going to say Molly Hatchet, Mary Hatchet appearing as a ghost, butt naked in the forest. I think it was funny that the husband was the first one to stop, though, in that story. He's like, honey, I think we should pull over. Those <laughs> ass chicks are calling me. But, uh, yeah, but, then, you know, they bring her in the car, and that sequence was pretty scary. I mean, especially when she walks away with the baby. It was cool. That's yeah, but other, after that, it's like, bum, bum, dun. Give it me goes, back my baby! It goes right downhill. It was Janosch. Janosch has my baby. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, uh, and then, you know, Graveyard Gus is like, no, nah, come on, kids, clean up this mess and let's get going. So, making that entire scene almost completely irrelevant, yeah. they just end up at a party and uh, they end up getting picked off one by one because Daniel Harris's character shows up. That's the party looking I want to be at. Looking sexy as ever. She, tells she did. She looked like a chick that would just, like, Daniel Harris in this movie actually just feels like Daniel Harris. Like, if, you, if your friend had a friend that knew Daniel Harris and you had a party and then all yeah. of a sudden she walks in and she doesn't really look like, like, you know, super celebrity hot, but she's, like, normal hot. Like, and she walks in and you're like, well, and you're like, oh my god, but Jay! She always kept her, she had that schoolgirl skirt on, right? Yeah, she did. And she always kept her legs open and her hand in between it, and then she told this crazy story about uh, being, like, gang, being raped. gang raped, but then she was like, and they branded me with a mouse because they used to call me mouse, and she's like, here it is right now, but then she's like, my pussy ate it, and I was like, why am I turned on right now? I know, I was, I've been that guy at the blender be like, uh, adventurous. <laughs> uh, but she was... She was good. I like Daniel Harris in it. The problem with this movie, really, overall, I mean, it's, we'll get more about what Daniel Harris, why she, you know, her integral part of this movie, but I don't think that she had enough lines in it. She didn't have much character development. She just shows up randomly at this house, and then 15 minutes later, we're, we're into the gore and mayhem. I understand why, but these characters that they gave so much attention to, I didn't, they, they didn't need it. They I think they only candy. had her, like I said, they used the budget on Coke. They only had her for a few days, probably. How much she cost? But the, but you know, during the, uh, you know, midst of all, you know, the sexual freshmen and all that stuff going on. A menstrual cycle. Uh, a menstrual cycle does occur, which is weird. The That's bears the, can smell the menstruation. Oh, God. Uh, it, it's weird, like. Yeah, she's bleeding from her crotch and, and stuff like that. Because that's a part, I guess, of the legend of Mary Hatchet is she, Daniel Harris. We mean when her period comes, she turns into Mary Hatchet. Isn't that just girls? Look up by it. I would never have watched oh, the rest. Oh, of it. Uh, no, I didn't realize the Wachati were biters. Uh, the the one scene that takes place the very first time uh, when the two kids are in the bed having sex, the first couple, uh, the horny couple. I mean, you know they're gonna die right the fuck away. Uh, she takes a pair of scissors and stabs it through the back of his head. Badass. I, I do like it, but I know, but I was thinking it's funny that she's still making the thing do this. 
<laughs> so she's making the scissors go, ha, 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 ha. And she's, it's like she's trying to talk to him. She's like, have you seen my blade sharpener? It's a bit dull back here. It was just funny. Like, I don't know, why would you stab somebody with scissors? And they go, <laughs> Some of the special effects are terrible, but in an awesome way. Like at one point, this dude's skull gets split and you see his brain go, Floop. and like you can see that it's fake, but it's so fun that it, it counts as great special effects. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, the, like I said, the, the gore effects do work for the most part overall. Uh, and it does work on the level that the movie was going for. It, it, you say C kind of, like a B movie, C, B, C kind of movie. It's kind of like that uh, British Columbia, <laughs> last of BC. But it, it, it's a C movie until the editing comes in and makes it uh, way better. Yeah, but you know, eventually it's revealed that uh, Daniel Harris is the one that's doing all the killing. And then they break into the psychiatric unit to search for records, I guess, or whatever. I checked out, man. <clears throat> I checked out when they did all no, that. No, I think that's what they were doing. And then they break in. And then they find some records, they get separated, of course they do, because they have to. That's the way of life! You don't get to be with your friend forever! And uh, so there's some things you gotta do alone, Jim. But anyhow, they break in there, they get separated, they find these files and records, they find out that Daniel Harris's character was actually the, uh, the child that survived. They just lied to Mary Hatchie and said that she was a stillbirth. How so Halloween she, of you. Yeah. And then, you know, the entire time I was thinking, after that, the rest, I'm, I, like, I'm, I'm getting through this now because I just, I, this is how I felt. That's what I'm saying, this yeah. is how I felt when I was the movie was going. I was like, let's go! I have a car to wash! But, <laughs> uh, you know, after the, you know, when they finally get to the very end, uh, the two surviving members, the guy that looks like, I don't know, a wannabe fucking, I don't know, James be, Spader. trying to be a pimp. Yeah, he looked like shit. Sorry. Just he, got, he looked like, like a, he looked like, like a, he just looked like he smelled like butt sweat. He was yeah. with that girl. But anyway, he's, you know, Daniel Harrison have a big confrontation. Daniel Harris walking through the psychiatric unit, by the way, with an axe. I'm just not buying it. I'm sorry. I like Daniel Harris. I think she's a cool actress. But as far as her being the, the like, to be honest, the girl's like five foot six or yeah. something. Like, it's just not intimidating to see a little five foot six girl yeah. that you think is attractive in a school uniform coming at you with a hatchet. For the most part, I'm going to be like... I'm gonna punch you and knock you out. And he did. But yeah, but can I get a number later? <laughs> like, I didn't hurt you hard. Uh, but anyway, so the, the guy gets on top of her, strangles her, and he's like fucking strangling the shit out of her. And the entire time, well, he's strangling her, killing Daniel Harris. By the way, the girl that he was with, it's like, stop! Stop! It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But anyway, the entire time he's strangling her, I'm thinking of Halloween 5 with Dr. Lewis. He's like, he meant you stop! you stop! I'm damn it! Where is it? And he's stop! He's like, Die, like I just felt like Lewis would do this. Like I will choke the shit out of you. It's kind of cool scene though. Uh, it was I won't say it's cool. It's not going No, that's not even crazy. No, uh, not the crazy today. Uh, but she, she does cut the fuck out of his arm, and the blood's squirting, and he's choking her to death, and the music's going, and the the editing's going crazy. Um, but I, I did think about that. It is kind of a cool to think like he's almost got her dead, but that his arm's losing blood. So I kept waiting for his arms to give out and him to pass out right before she died. That's too much. But no, he literally just like that's. You said it right, man. Like, she's, I love Daniel, Daniel Harris, but she can barely pick up this pickaxe she has. Like, you can see her struggle to pick it up and hit people with it. She was yeah. going to, she was going to mine? You <laughs> mean a hatchet? <laughs> you no, it was, a, it was a pickaxe. Was it? Yeah. It was, was, a, yeah. That, was it that big? No, yeah, it was, it was a pickaxe. Oh. <laughs> but, um, she. I don't know, I didn't pay attention. She was struggling, <laughs> yeah, she was struggling to pick it up, and it just wasn't scary at all. And then it would have been way better to have the naked titty chick come out and kill everybody and have she Daniel Harris again. be the final girl. But no, that, that, you, that's, the, that's what happens. He's like, I'll take care of this. And then Danny Zuko fucking punches her in the face, chokes her to death, and she's down. Like, she's done. Hey, Eddie Arcadia, aren't you aware that it's not right to hit women? After Daniel Harris is dead, you know, you have a moment between the two lovers. They're talking, and he's like, everything's going to be okay. And then his fucking head flies off, and then she looks over and screams, and it's the big titted Mary Hatchet saying, ah! Cue the metal music. And now, yeah, it, was all, it went all red. She's going for it. It's blue, and then... Dragula comes on. <laughs> through the ditches. Like that was it. That was the whole. Well, movie. let's be fair. It's not Dragula. It's the YouTube copyright free version of Dragula. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you know you recommended it, man. I've never seen it before. I never heard of it before. And there are some saving graces about this movie. Like the, the gore scenes are fun. I gotta admit, I had fun watching those. Daniel Harris is great. I just wish that they had given her more screen time. I wish that she'd had a more, to me, integral part. I know that she became the killer in the movie, but I wish that she had had, like, maybe went to high school with them, had more of a backstory, yeah. maybe focused more on her. I don't know, something like that. And then, like, killed some of these kids off way earlier that were uninteresting fuck sticks and not having, you know, not even dealing with them or trying to develop them at all. Because some of them were just bad, man. Yeah. Some of them were just bad actors. But anyway, it was mediocre acting, great gore graphic scenes. It sometimes was sputtering on, on the plot. Sometimes it didn't feel... It was very... 60 miles an hour. Back down to 25. We've just entered town. Backed up to 65. 
okay, now we're at 10. It just felt like very stuttery go kind of plot and the way that they snipped it together. But either way, I'm going to give the movie a 4.5. I still enjoyed it. I just don't think it's something that everybody's going to get a kick out. Now, if you like gore and graphic scenes and stuff, you're going to like it. But overall, like you're not going to think it's going to be the best... Or one of the cooler serial killer movies you've seen in a bit. Yeah, I, I give it a four point five too, man. I think, and I love Sean O'Brien that you picked this movie, and I love how much you love Daniel Harris. Your uh, Loomis video is coming out too, talking about that very soon. Um, but uh, I, I love that you picked this movie because again, it's one of those movies I would have never watched, never known about. And while I still give it a four point five, and there's some shittasticness <laughs> to it. There's some awesome scenes here and some laughs and I had a good time watching it that I otherwise never would have seen. So if you guys want to pick a movie for Patreon, pick anything you want. Well, yeah, it's definitely a movie that you, I, and again, I don't want to sell it short. I, I want to say if it's one of those, if there's a movie out there that uh, if you're bored or something or you had nothing really going on, definitely check the movie out because I mean, I, I do think it's something to be recommended to people. Yeah. Like I don't want to like shit on it too much and then, you know, just walk away like I didn't spray Glade. So, comment down below, we love your fucking faces and thank you Sean O'Brien for presenting this video to all these sexual some bitches that I want to touch and caress and buy fried chicken for. We love your goddamn faces. If you're new to this channel, click that subscribe button and get some my sick goddamn wham opinion. You guys like KFC or Popeyes? Do -do 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 Listen to Molly Hatchet and be live. We watched a movie. Yeah. You know what? We did review. We watched a movie.